Hey there. Tonight I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the V-Ray car paint material, which is a really cool material that V-Ray offers. It's procedural. It makes really cool uh, paint-looking stuff with metal flakes in it to make it look like a car. It's really cool. It's an effect that would be really hard to get without this cool V-Ray procedural material. So let's get started here. I made a simple little studio s setup with just this weird looking shape in the middle with spikes. And all I did so far was set up my lighting and camera. I have this default V-Ray sky in the environment slot up here just for my reflections and the environment light. I have a middle gray V-Ray material on the backdrop there and then I just this is the car paint material without anything done to it so all I did was tell it to be a V-Ray car paint material right here pop pop okay and this is how it comes in with this weird blue color but anyway let's check out how that renders it's actually pretty nice so you can see that's looking pretty nice you can see the little metal flakes in there can see some nice reflections happening on and again this is right out of the box it's exactly what it looks like just by default so that's actually kinda cool there's this nice light reflecting from up above you can see the environment reflecting so it's like a nice polished paint material now let's mess with some settings and see what other kind of effects we can get first of all I want to change the color to red because I really don't like this blue color so let's get this deep deep red color remember that's the base color so all I'm doing is selecting there on that color setting the base to this now the flake color I'm gonna make more like uh, let's copy and paste this into here but then adjust it to be more orangish maybe obviously you could do whatever you want but that's kinda cool now a lot of these settings are self-explanatory. Let's see what this looks like if we render a region of it first and then we'll do some more settings and render those. Okay, there's my red color looking a lot cooler. I actually want to display this in sRGB space like that. Okay, so there's our red color and you can see the orange flakes in there which is kinda cool. I want the, them to be a lot more dense. So let's see what we can do with that. Let's set it to point. You can see now that that's a little more dense. Still not quite what I want, I don't think. Okay, this render, I've messed with some of the settings. My flake glossiness is still at point 0.6. That's how much it's, how glossy the reflection is. The flake density can go up above 1. I've set that to 4. I might actually go a little higher. Maybe set the size a little lower. Oh, looks like 4 is the maximum on that. Okay. Flake scale, flake size, 0.2. Say 0.1 for the size. One thing you'll notice is that on these little spikes I created, and then turbo smooth the UVW mapping doesn't work properly that's because this sphere was all UVW mapped properly when I started when I created it by default but then when I started changing the model then the UVW mapping gets stretched so let's see if we can fix that remember those flakes this is a procedural material but those flakes will want to be you'll need to tell them how to map onto that sphere. So I'm not sure this will actually work, but let's see. Okay, now the mapping is no longer stretching as badly, uh, but if you really wanted this to be exactly right, you'd probably have to UVW unwrap this thing to get everything to match this perfectly, but at least we're not getting this anymore where the flake streaks from there to there. We definitely don't want that. So this doesn't map perfectly as a spherical map. That's all I put on it is a spherical UVW. It's not quite perfect, but it'll do. Let's mess with some of these other settings and see what we can do here. 
this coat color is going to be kind of like our clear coat on the paint. So we've messed with the flakes and the base paint color. And then there's a clear coat on top of it. That's what's giving that, that nice reflection of the light up above. So we can mess with that. Let's say we make this kind of like this deep purple color. See what that gives us. Wow, that's bright, but kind of cool. Okay, so you can see that the reflection is not as as uh, pronounced as it was, but you get these cool deep purples in this car color. So that's kind of cool, kind of like a car color you'd see from Pimp My Ride or something. Turn up the strength to point 0.1 show you what that does and of course you could also turn up turn down the glossiness to something like 0.5 this would be more like a this would be weird this would give you more of a matte car effect which wouldn't really work with the metal flakes and all that stuff so that's a little bit weird, although I can see you wanting to use that material for something else other than car paint. It's kind of cool. I like how it has that kind of iridescent look as it goes around the corner. You get the more of the clear coat and the, the purple going on because of the Fresnel reflections, which is cool. But for this, you want that more like one, so it's that nice sheen on there. You can probably get it a little um, less purpley. Uh, maybe even more blue like that that might be cool I don't know it's all about it's all about experimenting but really this is a pretty simple material it's all kind of self-explanatory of course you can put maps in for all the things we've done instead which could be really cool you can make all sorts of different things really you could plug a noise map into here or a smoke map and I mean the sky's the limit with what you can do. Just use your imagination. Um, but the basic settings, uh, that's all pretty simple. Let me go through a few more here and then we'll be done. Okay, the only other things I did was turn up the base reflection a little bit, turn down the base glossiness. Did I want to do that? No, let's turn that back up a little bit. Like that. And so basically, you just have to remember there's three layers there's the base layer, the color, the glossiness, and the reflection, the amount of reflection. The flake color has a little more control. And then the coat layer is basically the same as the base layer. And think of that as a clear coat. Then there's some quality settings here, obviously. And then there's maps for any one of those. So again, like I said, your imagination is the limit. Now, I'm going to render this whole thing, but I want to render out some render elements to show you some other things because we can make this look really cool in Photoshop. So I think what we want is at least a V-Ray. Let's see. Oh, there's so many in here when you get a V-Ray going on. Okay, we definitely want V-Ray Specular. V-Ray Z-Depth. We'll have to set that one up properly. V-Ray. Um, let's see. I should look through here and then come back. Duh, V-Ray Reflection. And that's probably all we need. Whoops. We don't need all the, we don't need the raw ones or anything like that. Okay, let's set that up. Let's take those three channels and those will help us with Photoshop a little bit. Let's set up V-Ray Z-Depth. You actually don't need to click Enable there. Z-Depth Max. Um, you need to kind of know the distance this is from your camera. So let's see, we'll say like 40 or something. That, that means the, the, the white is going to be at zero uh, inches away from your camera or zero units away from your camera and the, the black is going to be 40 units away from your camera. And I'll show you what that means in a minute. Let's render this whole thing with our channels. Make sure you're using the V-Ray frame buffer. It'll show you all these channels. And here we go. Okay, while this is rendering, let me just show you, well, all I really did was turn up the quality of my 
global DMC, clear, turn up my adaptive image sampler um, to get less noise on that paint so that it could be nice and clean. I turn up the subdivisions in my options here on my on my paint material so that makes those reflections nice and clean and I also put a UVW map and changed it to from I had it I had one on there and it was spherical I changed it to box because it would actually it was actually working better and you can see those flakes are are now mapping pretty well to that thing and this paint material actually comes out really cool that cool blue that you see on the clear coat as it goes around the corner with those Fresnel reflections and then you see this environment all reflecting up in here and you get some of that deep purple color still I mean that's for for just being straight out of the box and really just changing some colors and a few settings this car paint material is pretty dang cool so I'm gonna make this available for download at the end of the video so you can just go grab it if you want use mine study it use the settings off of it you can even have my cool little uh, whatever this object is you can have that model for free it's yours and the only other thing I'm gonna do is take this into Photoshop and show you a little post work with the channels I rendered out let me show you what those look like real quick alpha there isn't one because I've got that solid background back there the reflection look how cool the reflection channel is on this and that's nice and clean and it's just there's tons of color in there I mean that looks awesome the specular is kind of what you'd expect. I've got a big bright light up above this thing, and so that's giving a nice um, lighting effect on the top of that. You can see how the flakes of metal catch the light from up above the specular reflection. That's pretty cool. And then the Z depth. I oh, another thing I did was change the Z depth from zero to 500. I wasn't sure. I didn't even set up the units in this file. So anyway, there's a Z depth right there. I can show you what we can do with that afterwards and I'm gonna save these all out as 16-bit TIFFs so they have a little more information in them and then we're gonna post process it just kinda pop up the contrast a little bit make it look really cool and then I'll use that as my thumbnail for the video and uh, that's pretty much all you need to know about V-Ray car paint material so I'll see you over there in Photoshop where we'll be checking out the final rendering one more thing before we post process let me just sort of show you one little cool trick that took me forever to learn hopefully you guys already know this but in the V-Ray frame buffer you can hit this save all image channels so you hit that and it'll save all your channels at once and then in Photoshop there's a way to bring those all in as layers all at once so you have everything kind of ready to composite from there Okay, so I'll see you in Photoshop now. This saves out all channels at one time. Remember, I'm going to save them out as 16-bit TIFFs. Okay, here we are in Photoshop. Let me just show you that one little trick that I uh, was talking about. Okay, let me just select all our little... No, we don't really need the alpha channel. Hit open. You'll see what this is doing. It's opening each one, but then it's going to compile them all into... Ha! I did it wrong. Well, I'll show you again so that you can see me actually do it. File, scripts, load files into stack. Browse. Grab these guys. OK. Now they're all loaded here. Hit OK. Now it'll load them, it'll open them all and put them all in the stack together into one file as layers. And then you're ready to comp. So anyway, I used to always just save those out individually and then load them individually and drag and drop. It was super annoying. So I'm glad I found that little trick. Maybe you already know about it. Maybe I'm just slow. Anyway, here's our RGB channel. Here is our, oh, let me get my tablet. Where's my tablet? Where's my tablet? Come on, pen. Ooh. All right, forget you, pen. Okay. RGB, we'll put that on the bottom. And we'll put the reflection down here. Yeah. 
Okay, now obviously these channels are already applied to the overall RGB because I'm not doing a true composite here. But what you could do if you wanted is turn that to linear dodge and even and bump that reflection up even more. I'm not sure we want that, but actually that's kind of cool, like right there. Oh yeah, that's better. The specular, let's see if that's better. This is kind of doubling the reflection on top of itself. That's actually kind of cooler too. So that's cool. And then I definitely want to put a curves on it. And you can do the basic like that. I mean, that is really popping out now. Look at that. That is a nice car paint material. Now you can do the, you could just do the basic um man that is cool. You can do the basic S like that on the RGB channel or you can just or you can go into the separate colors and really get it to do some funky stuff. That's cool. That is bright bright red. And it's going to start affecting my background a lot now too, which I'm not sure that I want. But of course Again, sky's the limit on what you could do. It's getting a lot of different effects there. So let's reset that and go just back to my RGB and just get. Uh, that looks boring in comparison, doesn't it? That's the problem with these digital files. You can you can just keep going forever. That's cool. So is that everything's cool <laughs> okay I'm gonna leave it like that because I really like the contrast there and everything so if you hold down alt and click on this eyeball it'll show you the original that just looks pathetic in comparison now so you can see what a little bit of Photoshop could do for you that's cool now the last thing is this V-Ray Z depth and this may or may not work but if you copy this control A to select that whole thing and then control C to copy it and then just turn it off go into your channels tab here create a new channel by clicking that button and then paste that Z depth into there now we have the, a depth channel that is the Z depth doesn't need to be on in fact it shouldn't be on now if you hit control alt shift and E all together that takes all these layers combines them all and then jumps them to a whole new layer up here so it's just the whole thing copied on top of itself and then we can do our maybe you've seen this before maybe you haven't but if you go into lens corrections oh no sorry it's not lens corrections it's lens blur filter blur lens blur that's kinda cool um, now this is uh, this is not a great way to get depth of field. You can render it obviously in V-Ray depth of field. You can render it. You can render it after the fact using a Z depth channel like I'm about to show you. But Photoshop isn't great at doing it. After Effects is a lot better, especially with a plugin such as the one called Frischkluft. I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, it does a lot better job than the built-in Photoshop stuff does. But the Photoshop thing will give us depth of field if we tell it to use that Z depth channel. Alpha 1 is what it was called. Yeah, we might need to add some contrast to it. You can see there's getting a little bit of depth of field in there, but really it's not super accurate. And I think I need to let's cancel. Let's get let's get this thing um, more contrasted. So kind of like, and this is where it's good to have a 16-bit tip. So there now we see that range. So that very tip is the very widest, and then back there is more black, which is good. You can even maybe clamp it even a little more like that. Actually, that might work. Let's try that. So that was just a levels adjustment. Now now there's enough contrast in that thing that we might be able to get the proper blurring that we want lens blur ah that's not what we want make sure that's selected again 
go back in here filter blur lens blur make sure the source is chosen as alpha 1 and there you see it blurring looks like maybe we want to invert it okay so that is not the cleanest blurring going on there it's not like you get nice bokeh effects or anything like that and you can see the edges just aren't really clean it's like it there's the solid edge still there too but then there's a blur like on top of it kinda so that is not a great or highly accurate lens blur but in a pinch I guess it can do we probably want to turn that down some Anyway, there's a little bit of blur on that thing now. That's cool. Like I said, um, After Effects, a plugin called Frischcleft. I'm not sure if you can get Frischcleft for Photoshop or not. But anyway, it does really nice uh, depth of field stuff. Much more accurate than this. But for now, this will work. There's my cool car paint material. Maybe a little too much blur on there. Let's get the full screen. Turn off all those. Okay. There it is. Kind of cool. Uh, one other thing we could do maybe in Photoshop is filter, lens correction. Sorry, this video is going on longer than I thought it needed to. can add some of this this chromatic aberration that everyone likes to do. Add some vignetting. That's cool. There you go. That's a cool image. It's going to make a perfect thumbnail for my video. And remember, you can download the car paint material. You can make it available for download. Just click the link after the video. Thanks a lot for checking it out.